Hello, let's solve this problem. What is the information given? We have three circumferences. The angular measure of arc GEI is 80 degrees, and the points G, D, J, and I are points of tangency. Let's name the circumferences C1, C2, and C3 as shown. The fact that there are points of tangency indicates that there are tangent curves in the figure. G is a point of tangency, then circumference C1 is tangent to circumference C3. D is a point of tangency, then the straight line JD is tangent to circumference C1. J is a point of tangency, then the straight line JD is tangent to circumference C2. I is a point of tangency, then circumference C3 is tangent to circumference C2. When we try to solve a problem, we have to ask ourselves if we know a relation between the unknown and the known values, which are initially the numerical information given. In this case, given the figure shown, we don't know initially a formula that we can use to relate the unknown theta with the known angular measure of the arc GEI, that is 80 degrees. Then what should we do? One strategy that you can also use in other problems is to see how the unknown and the numerical information given are related with other values in the problem. Doing this can give you later an idea about how to relate the unknown with the values known in the problem. For instance, the unknown theta is the measure of two angles. Can we relate theta with other values in the figure? To start, let's focus on the unknown theta that is the measure of angle GDJ. That angle is determined by the segment GD, which is a chord of circumference C1 and the straight line JD that is tangent to the circumference C1 at point D. Do we know something about that type of angle? The semi-inscribed angle in a circumference is the one determined by a chord and a straight line tangent to the circumference at one end of the chord. In the figure shown, the semi-inscribed angle GDJ is determined by the chord GD and the straight line L. The relation that we should remember is that the measure of the semi-inscribed angle is half the angular measure of the arc between the sides of the angle. Then, from the figure, we can say that the measure of angle GDJ is half the angular measure of arc GQD. To apply the relation, you don't need to see the rays forming the angle. It is enough to have one chord and a straight line segment tangent to the circumference at one end of the chord. Then, if in the figure the measure of the semi-inscribed angle is theta, the measure of the arc between the sides should be two times theta. Looking at the figure, you may have noticed that we can apply the same relation for the semi-inscribed angle that can be determined at the other end of the chord, that is at point G. That is why having this figure in a problem it is commonly convenient to draw the tangent at the other end of the chord. Doing that, we would have two semi-inscribed angles at the ends of the chord, both with the same measure and equal to half the angular measure of the corresponding arc. Before we continue with the solution, let's see a simple but important note. If we have two tangent circumferences, let's say circumferences C1 and C3, tangent at point G and a straight line L tangent to one of the circumferences, let's say to circumference C1 at the point of tangency G, then the straight line L is necessarily tangent to the other circumference, that is to circumference C3 in the figure. Okay, based on what we have remembered, 
What do you think is convenient to do in the figure? We draw the straight line tangent to circumference C1 at point G, which is the point of tangency between circumferences C1 and C3. Then, as you know, that straight line would also be tangent to circumference C3, and the measure of the semi-inscribed angle at G would also be theta. Focusing now on the unknown theta at point J, you see that it would be convenient to do the same at circumference C2. That is why we draw the straight line tangent to the circumference C2 at point I, the point of tangency between circumferences C2 and C3. That straight line would also be tangent to circumference C3. The semi-inscribed angle determined at point I has equal measure to the semi-inscribed angle at J. Both are equal to theta. Okay, what we have done until now is to see how the unknown theta is related to other values in the figure. Now, because we don't know yet how to relate the unknown theta with the known value we have, that is the angular measure of arc GEI, which is 80 degrees, what we can do is to see how that known value is related to other values in the figure. Something that could help us relate the measure of the arc GEI is to see that we have a straight lines tangent to circumference C3 at points G and I. And to remember that there is a type of angle, call it exterior angle, that is determined by two straight lines tangent to a circumference. The sum of the measure of the exterior angle that is determined by two straight lines tangent to a circumference and the angular measure of the closest arc determined in the circumference is equal to 180 degrees. Then, from the figure being beta the angular measure of the arc, we can say that alpha plus beta is 180 degrees. Then, going back to our problem, what do you think is convenient to do to relate the measure of arc GEI, the 80 degrees, with other values in the figure? Yes, we should complete the figure to obtain the exterior angle and apply the relation we just mentioned. Then we extend the two straight lines tangent to circumference C3 until their intersection point. Because the sum of the measure of the exterior angle just formed and the measure of arc GEI, which is 80 degrees, should be 180 degrees, the measure of the exterior angle is 100 degrees. Okay, what we have done until now is to relate the unknown theta and the information given, the 80 degrees, with other values in the figure. Do we have now an idea on how to relate the unknown theta with known values in the problem? You see that we have now the pentagon GFIJD, in which the measures of its interior angles at G, D, J, and I are in terms of theta, and the measure of its interior angle at F is known. It is 100 degrees. To solve the problem, it would suffice to work on that pentagon. There, we can relate theta with the 100 degrees. Before we continue, let's talk about simple polygons. A simple polygon is the polygon in which only consecutive sides intersect and only at their endpoints. This polygon doesn't have holes. Simple polygons can be either convex or non-convex. A simple convex polygon is the simple polygon in which the measures of all his interior angles are less than 180 degrees. If a simple polygon is non-convex, it is called concave. A simple polygon is non-convex if it has at least one interior angle with measure greater than 180 degrees. 
An important formula in simple polygons is the one used to calculate the sum of the measures of all the interior angles. In the figure, we show a generic simple polygon of n sides in which the measures of the interior angles are not necessarily equal. The sum would be alpha sub 1 plus alpha sub 2 plus alpha sub 3 plus all the next measures until alpha sub n. That sum depends only on the number of sides n and is equal to 180 degrees times n minus 2. For instance, a triangle is a simple polygon of three sides. Then n is 3, n minus 2 is 1, and the sum is 180 degrees. Quadrilaterals have four sides, then n is 4, n minus 2 is 2, and the sum is 360 degrees. Pentagons have five sides, then n is 5, n minus 2 is 3, and the sum is 540 degrees. Before we continue, just remember the following basic property about triangles. The measure of an exterior angle corresponding to one vertex is equal to the sum of the measures of the interior angles corresponding to the other two vertices. Now, let's go back to our problem. We want to relate the unknown value theta with the 100 degrees, the known value. Based on what we know, we have multiple ways to do it. Let's see two approaches to relate theta with the 100 degrees. The first approach. From the figure, you can see that the pentagon GFIJD is a simple polygon. Then the sum of the measures of all his interior angles is 540 degrees. That sum can also be obtained in terms of theta. Noticing from the figure that the measure of the interior angle at J is 180 degrees plus theta, we have the following relation. 4 times theta plus 180 degrees plus 100 degrees is equal to 540 degrees, from which we obtain the value of theta. It is 65 degrees. That is the answer to our problem. Let's see a second approach. Sometimes we can avoid or reduce operations using auxiliary lines. For instance, in this problem, we could avoid using the formula of the sum of the measures of all the interior angles in a pentagon. If we extend segment DJ until the intersection with the side FI, then we obtain the triangle JNI and the quadrilateral GFND. Focusing on triangle JNI, we can calculate the measure of its exterior angle at N using the formula we reminded. Then it should be theta plus theta, that is 2 times theta. Now let's focus on the simple quadrilateral GFND. The sum of the measures of all its interior angles is 360 degrees, but as you can see in the figure, that sum can also be calculated in terms of theta. Then we have that 4 times theta plus 100 degrees is equal to 360 degrees, from which we obtain the value of theta. It is 65 degrees. Great, we have completed the solution to the problem. For solutions to other problems in pre-university or university topics, visit 4duni.com. Thank you for watching this video. Until next time.